one more time for Sean Castle. <laughs> Meteoric. Uh, the biggest talent to come out of Atlanta in, in my lifetime. When he was 15 years old, he was the best blues guitar player in Atlanta. Hadn't even started singing yet. When he started doing that, all bets were off. I first met him at Fat Matt's at the Blues Jam. Um, didn't know who he was. All I knew was there was this 11 or 12 year old kid, maybe 13, came in with a Strat. Everybody was just, jaws were on the floor. I met Sean uh, when I was playing King Biscuit Blues Festival and he was 14. He sounded like an 80 year old broke black man is what he sounded like. Oh my God, I couldn't believe it. And then his guitar playing, he was, he was phenomenal. He was phenomenal. Bring me champagne when I'm thirsty. The first actual gig he had was at Northside. It's the first actual gig he had was at Northside. You know, he worked his way here, kind of, is what he did. And, you know, he's too young to be in here to start with. She was so good to young musicians that um, she just always had a place for Sean. Before he turned 21, I was serving him, but he was really cool about it, you know, so I got to feeling guilty about it. Mm -hmm. So I told Ellen, I said, Ellen, that's something I better tell you. I said, you know, Sean will be 21 in two or three months or whatever it was, and I said, uh, I've been serving him. She says, does he pay you? And I says, hell yes, he pays me. <laughs> she says, good, I've been serving him and he don't pay me. <laughs> I said, okay. Just start with something easy to understand and then something that's a little twisted and then something that kind of eases the tension. I like to have tension and release and it's sort of like some, sometimes it's just kind of like a mad search for what I'm actually going for. <laughs> I just like to feel the tension and the, the sort of pain of it and then sort of ease that. This is a book that came out a couple years ago, um, Gibson Les Paul book. And of course, Sean had his iconic um, gold top. See if I can find Oh, there he is. And it's in the book. He's also in a documentary that Kevin Bacon narrates. That was the fall before he passed away. And he said there. I don't even know where the guitar player ends and where I actually begin. You know, I think it's kind of I'm the one and the same at this point. I've been standing by my telephone. Playing with him. You know, I mean, we're best buddies, but still, like, there was this energy on stage that, like, I don't know how to put it. You know, you just kind of get, like, the, the chills. Yes. Like, you just get revved up, and there's just a lot of energy coming off that stage, and there's nothing else in the room. It's just like, dun -dun, dun -dun. you know what I mean? His favorite time playing was being a sideman on someone else's gig because he had no pressure mm. at all to perform. Yeah. You know, there was no critics watching, right. there's no record people, none of this. I'd never been to a blues bar before. So I was about uh, 19 years old, going to college, and then my friend was like, man, if, you're, you know, if you've gotten so into blues, we really gotta go to this blues club in Atlanta, it's just killer. And he was a little older than I was, and I, I was like, okay, cool. So we drove from my hometown of Thomaston, which is 
like an hour and a half or two hours away from here um, on a Saturday night at like nine o'clock. And that's what we were gonna do for the night was come to this blues bar, you know? We get here and you gotta be 21 to get in. The door opened up, Sean Costello is right here on the front of that stage with the gold top, on his tippy toes, this golden sound and light blasts out of the door and all I see is like Sean going like this. And I was like, Whoa. and then the door shuts. And I was like, what was that, dude? So I beg PJ to let me go in. And he's like, no, I was like, all right, well, um, can I just stand here with the door open for like 10 minutes? And he was like, yeah, you can do that. So I opened the door, I put my foot in front of it and stand right there and watch Sean Costello play for like 10 minutes. And then he's like, all right, kid, scram. And then I had to like let my foot off the door and shut. And when we got in, in the car and drove an hour and a half back, and I just remember being like, what was that? And I just couldn't imagine like what it would be like to be in here. Like to, cause everybody was dancing. And it was like, when you opened the door, it was just like the happiest, freakiest shit you'd ever seen in your life. Old people and young people and, and Sean on his toes and you know, all of this. And, I just, I'd never seen anything like that.